The problem we now have is users can sign up with the same email address. And let's say you wanted to add a username to this, it's gonna be exactly the same problem. You don't want people with the same username or email signing up. It just doesn't make sense. So to do this, how are we gonna do this when inside of our authentication controller, we're setting the rule here. Now, what we don't really want to do is start doing things like if, and then checking our database at this kind of point. What we want to do is basically extract this away from our controller and instead embed it in our validation rules. And this makes sense because you are technically validating that the data is valid and the form can be properly submitted and the intended action can be taken. So what we do is with the validation library that we're using, we can very easily create custom rules. And at that point, we can hit our database. So all we want to do is inside of our validation folder, we want to create a new folder for our custom rules. So let's set the first rule up and just see what this looks like. So this one is going to be called email available. Again, call this whatever you want as long as it makes sense to you and you can re remember it. So we're gonna call this, uh, or namespace this under validation rules. And down here, we just call this email available. So now what we want to do is extend respect validations abstract rule. So let's just use respect validation rules abstract rule and here we can extend that abstract rule. So that might seem pretty straightforward, and of course the rest of it is even easier. All we need to do in here is implement a validate method. So let's call this validate. Of course, with anything that we validate, we have some input come through. So we can test this out by just doing a var dump on input. It's really good to just test these kind of things out just to see that everything's working. And all we do within here is we either return a true value or a false value. So let's just hook this into our form and then we'll start to think about how we can touch our database. So over in our bootstrap file, in our app file, what we want to do down here is just do something that allows this validation library to use our rules. And all we do is say v, with, and then we give the namespace to where our rules are kept. And we're using backslashes like this because uh, we're, we're basically uh, good escaping them. Now we don't have V pulled in, so let's just do this at the top here. Respect, validation, validator, and we'll call it V. So now we are loading in all of our rules and now when we just use these rules here, they'll be picked up. So the kind of important thing to note here is that the name that we give our class is going to become the name of the rule. So in our case, we need to say email available like so. So this will then look inside of the directory that we've specified here, or at least under the namespace we've specified here. It will find this rule it will call the validate method, and here we either return true or false. In actual fact, to test this out, let's return false, just to assume it fails. So now, if we go and check our database, we know that we've got alex at codecourse.com, so let's try billy at codecourse.com, hit sign up, and we see an error, but we do have this available, and we've called the class the right name, so I think it's probably something to do with this path here. So I think we might need a forward slash uh, or backslash rather on the end of here. So let's just try this again. Let's submit this with Billy at Code Course. And this is fine. So we're at a good point here. The reason that this is now errored is because we don't have an exception found for this rule. Now that's really important because you may have noticed we've not defined any error messaging or anything like that around this rule. So we can set this up now just to check that this works. So for every rule that you create, you'll need to create not only the rule, but an exception so this validation library knows how to handle it. So we're gonna create an exception just in here, and we're gonna call this email available, so the same name as the rule, but exception.php. So here we can just give this our namespace, so it's at 
validation exceptions and it's called email available exception. So this needs to extend a validation exception from the respect validation library. So let's pull this in and it's validation exception. So now we can just extend that there. Now in here, we just have a template for the default and the negative mode. Now, the negative mode just means that if you are kind of reversing the check, so we're going to kind of ignore that and we'll just implement the template for the default error message. So we have a static property here. It's called default templates. These can, of course, get a little bit more advanced, but you can go ahead and check out the library's GitHub page for all their documentation. And of course, look through the code as well. And here we have a default mode, what I was talking about. So default mode. So this is just an array. And in here we have our error message. So we have def uh, sta a standard property here and we just give the error message. So email is already taken and that is it. That's all we need to do. We now have our exception and the library will handle this and it will give us that, that give us that error back when remember we actually set up our handling here. So this will just be appended to our normal errors. So now that we've got this set up, let's go and preview this. So Alex or rather Billy at codecourse.com. We know this doesn't exist, but remember we're returning false. So here, and of course we have a syntax error. So that needs to be like that. Let's refresh. And once again, let's fix this up as well. There we go, great. So we now get email is already taken, but we know that's not the case. So we now need to figure out how we are going to update this to check our database. Of course, we already know that we have Eloquent set up. So all we really need to do here is return a user where the email column is the same as the input given. We need to grab the count from this and we need to check if it's zero. Now, if it is zero, this will return true, which is what we want. We want this to pass. Otherwise, if this email already exists, we'll get a count of one that doesn't equal zero. And unfortunately, therefore, we'll return false. So let's just pull this model in. So it's app models user and we're done. We have a nice clean rule here. Everything extracted away from our container controller method. So now we can actually test this out. Hit sign up. We see the normal errors. Let's go and enter my email address. Hit sign up. Email is already taken. Let's create a new email that uh, passes, which is great. And now we can try and register a new user and that works. We can go over to our database and see that that's in there. So that is all we need to do now. So later on down the line, if we need to set up a new rule, we just create a new rule, create a new exception following the same templates and we're done. But the key thing here is that our auth controller is now nice and clean. We're validating, checking if it's failed, and then of course, just registering the user.